find myself and find my roots. Oh, caught in a bad romance. Hey, we need to take it on the road. Take it on the road. She was born in the outskirts of Seoul to an American GI and a young Korean woman. He was born in Alsace, France, land of pork and cabbage. She was put up for adoption at three and then lovingly raised in Virginia by her new family. He was 16 when he began his apprenticeship. She found her birth mother when she was 19. He came to America and became one of the world's greatest chefs. They fell in love and married over a decade ago. Now, Jean-Georges and Marja return to her birthplace to chronicle the tastes and traditions of Korea. These are the Kimchi Chronicles. Korea is a largely mountainous country. Throughout history, any stretch of flat land was dedicated to growing the most valued of crops, rice. Rice is the bread and butter of the Korean table. It's not merely a staple, it's the staple. Rice is often simply steamed. It gets stir-fried with kimchi and becomes crispy at the bottom of hot stone pots. It's eaten in things and alongside everything. It's the anchor in the canvas of every Korean meal. The most noted places for rice are Ichan, just an hour southeast of Seoul, and Kimje in the southwest of Korea, a long, long way from Busan. But that's where we started our rice adventure. Busan, Korea's second largest city and the world's fifth largest port, is at the southeastern corner of the peninsula. It's a booming, prosperous commercial city that's expanding rapidly. But Busan also boasts some of the best beaches in Korea. One sunny 75 degree December day, I met up with my friend, the wonderful actress Heather Graham. But, um, I was born in Ujungbo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was born to my mother, who was uh, single, 19, uh -huh. she had me. And um, my father was a, a serviceman. And then I was adopted to the States wow. at three. And, you know, grew up in Northern Virginia, uh, right outside of DC. Cool went to college and I just decided, you know, at 19, ironically, same mm -hmm. age as my mom giving me up, um, or having me, my mother mm -hmm. having me, I decided I wanted to find myself and find my roots and mm -hmm. a few months later after some research, I was able to find her wow. in New York. She must have been blown away, huh? Yeah, she, she was. Up. And you know, it's funny because when I was, when I was, um, Growing up, I had memories of her, but it was only from like a three-year-old's height mm -hmm. perspective. Mm -hmm. So I remembered her physically there, but mm -hmm. I could never remember her face. And then mm -hmm. when I flew to New York to see her, it's just there was just this wall of people, and I, I just saw her face, and I just knew it was her. Like, we just wow. knew each other instantly. She looks like you? She does. <laughs> so my mom whisked me to her uh, house in New York in Brooklyn. Wow. She proceeded to stuff my face with Korean food oh, because that's cute. what Koreans do, mm -hmm. if you haven't noticed already. <laughs> um, and awesome. then she poured me a bath and she came in and started scrubbing me, which is very odd because, yeah. you know, I mean, I think in America <laughs> after you're six or whatever, you take your right, own bath. Right. But anyway, she was scrubbing me for two pur purposes. One, you know, that's what Korean mothers do. Mm -hmm. And two, she was looking for a birthmark wow. on my leg. To see if you're being... To you're make sure it was me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, she saw it and it just... That's so interesting, huh? So I've spent 16 years of my life rediscovering my culture and all my family's here on my mother's side and wow. I've just got this amazing... Are you close with them? Very. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like wow. I, I miss them the first half of my life but I get them the second That's half. So amazing. Which I think is even, even better and more special. Heather and I could have happily spent our day at the beach, but we had an appointment to keep. On the outskirts of Pusan is the CJ factory number two, where they mill and refine the rice. 
They told us to suit up and we followed suit. My go-to Korean food guru, Diana, showed us a drill and we fell in step. Looking like the Three Musketeers, or maybe the Three Stooges, we watched the three stages of rice milling. Taking it from unprocessed brown rice to a husked yellow version, and then finally refined white rice. Koreans prefer a short-grained, slightly sticky rice, which happens to translate to a great instant rice. Rice fresh off the line is mighty good, but we were about to take a big step up in the rice world. At Kegum Market, while groups of female vendors took their lunch breaks, we found our way to Saim Dang Dok, known for making some of the freshest, most delicious dok in town. Dok means rice cakes made of ground, then pounded and steamed rice. Dok can be sweetened and served as dessert or stir-fried with kimchi for the most savory of dishes. To make dok, first Min Sook Yoon takes rice that's been soaked in salted water for three hours before being drained and then ground into a powder. Not a lot of water is added to dampen the powder. This loose dough gets packed into wooden molds and then is steamed for just 10 minutes. Wow, it's beautiful. Uh, so this is wow. the um, already steamed. Mm -hmm. right, look at that. Can you smell it? Yeah. Smell this is what chefs do. <laughs> So now it's going to get extruded through this machine, almost like pasta. Right. And before, you know, traditionally we had to pound it. Oh my God. For a long time. Oh my gosh, you see how he's Whoa. taking the. I have never seen this before. This is so cool. Oh, he's going to put it back through again? Yeah, Why so he, do that? because to make it very sticky oh, and okay. you know, I got add it. the tension. Wow. So there it comes. It's the first time I'm having it actually fresh yeah. off the uh, I think kids would really like this, right? They do, my daughter loves yeah. it. Mm -hmm. It's fun. We eat it especially on New Year's Day. Mm. Right. So you're not really aging a year if you haven't had this stuff, right? Mm. So Say what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good yeah. luck for the year, like if you eat this? Good luck and also it's a symbol mm. of um, longevity. Mm. But here can show you the product that's already mm. been cut. Oh, the finished yeah. product, okay. Finished. She's the wife of the, uh, the man who just showed us how to make the rice cakes. I love this cake because this is a very spongy cake. Mm. So when I was little, I used to love this cake. This is the kind of rice cake that we eat during Thanksgiving. The one with honey and uh, sesame. Yeah. Yeah. Honey and sesame. Well, you want to eat it when it's as mm. fresh as possible. So which one are you going to do, ladies? I'm going to try the green one. I'm yeah, trying pink. Too. Watch out. Mm. Mm, so, so. Mm. Mm. It's kind of nutty inside. <laughs> we had three different, mm -hmm. wow. It's good. You like it? Mm -hmm. I told you this is my favorite one. I like how they're keeping it warm. It keeps it soft. They're good. Fresh stock is hard to beat, but we were about to take yet another step up in rice cookery. Dongne Halme Pajon is Busan's oldest and one of its most famous restaurants. It's always been run by women and for the past 15 years, Jung Hee Kim has overseen the restaurant that her great-great-grandmother-in-law began. We were there for the dish that made the restaurant famous, Dongne Pajon. Pajon are the popular Korean scallion and seafood pancakes. Dongne Pajon are made with a rice flour batter that results in a soft, almost creamy, but very yummy pancake. Thanks for coming to her restaurant. Absolutely. Very excited. She's fourth generation. I love that. It's 78th year since wow. they opened the restaurant. I love how you can see her making. Yeah, the open kitchen. Yeah, it's nice. Actually, you know, the scallion pancakes that we're going to eat, and which is a specialty of this restaurant, mm -hmm. she said it always tastes best on a, mm -hmm. a sort of a rainy day or a gloomy mm -hmm. day because 
the sound of the falling rain is the same as the scallion pancakes cooking on the stove. Mm -hmm. ah, so you can nice. hear the sizzle. So when it rains, most Koreans think about eating scallion pancakes. Their scallion pancakes are very particularly special because mm -hmm. they use very thick steel pan. Mm -hmm. The way they cook it is it's almost like playing the accordion. You know, right. they spread out the scallions and then they pull it all together and add a lot of different seafood to it. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. very important that they cook it once they get the orders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh it looks so much so Wow, that looks So beautiful looking. Uh, inside the pajan, obviously the scallion, mm -hmm. There's clams, mm -hmm. there are shrimp. Wow. This soft part is a sweet rice powder mixed mm -hmm. with regular rice. And then there's egg. At the last minute. So it's really soft here. They use a lot more sweet rice powder. So it makes it really soft. So delicious and fresh. Mm. The colors mm. and... Yeah, it's gorgeous. Mm. Is pajan typically served with makgeolli? Um, makgeolli was the kind of drink that a lot of the commoners usually drank or farmers drank after working in the fields. And pajan is very simple and fulfilling. Right. Take probably scallions from the field and add, you know, whatever egg to it. Peasant food, I always find, is the absolute best mm -hmm. food in any country. Because it's simple. It's like it's simple. simple. I mean, that's what you want to eat. You know? All right, peasants. Yeah. Let's have a makgeolli toast. Oh. Diana, you get an A plus for your food tour. Thank you. Rice. We're talking about rice today, which is one of your favorite things, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are we making today? Kimbap. Yes. Kimbap. All right. So do you know what you're doing? Yeah. But kimbap, it's, it kind of looks like what? It looks like sushi a little bit. So you can put whatever you want in it. It's crispy, yeah? Yeah, it's crispy. You get these sheets. And we're going to put it on this little mat here. Chloe, why don't you take a little bit of rice and spread it? With this? Yes, perfect. You can also use your fingers, honey. Okay. You put the fingers in the water, and then you spread the rice. See? There you go. That's easier. Okay, you're gonna use your hands? Mm-hmm. That's good. There you go. Hey, you could get a job making yeah, sushi. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Kimbap is, is really popular with uh, Korean children, and it's taken a lot on picnics, because it's yeah. easy, you don't have to refrigerate it, and it's easy, you don't need any utensils. And you can put whatever you want in there. So, Chloe, go ahead, Vazi. What are we gonna put in there? Oh, that's your favorite too, no? This is um, this is pickled uh, moo. There you go. It's crunchy and it adds a nice little. What something is this one in there? Here? That's kimchi, rinsed off for Chloe. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. She likes the sour taste of kimchi, but sometimes the heat is can be a, a bit too much. Spicy? Yeah. You know what you're doing, girl. All right, show Daddy what to do. Good job. Squeeze okay. and roll. That's fun. There you go. Perfecto. Daddy, can you cut that? Absolutely. Just make sure can you wet the knife. Can you cut it thin? Yeah, small pieces, please. Wow, mm -hmm. that's good. It does look good. So a little bite, I guess? Mmm, that looks really good. Can you serve that with a sauce, or you, how do you, how you do this? This isn't really served with sauce. But my favorite is, don't look at me funny, but it's this one really spicy nice. tuna fish with kimchi and cheese. <laughs> spicy tuna fish? Yeah. Wow. It's really good. So you can do different variations. Here, babe, try. What about this one here that you made? What you, what you put in this one? Oh, you can do leftover bulgogi. This is a little bit of carrot, spinach, takwang, egg, and cheese. Oh, awesome. the cheese makes it happen. Mmm. Right? How is the cheese? <laughs> I like the, um, the takwang, mm -hmm. crunchy takwang. That's what you like too, huh? That's lunch, Chloe made lunch. Mm. All right. I like it with the cheese, huh? See? It's nice. All right, so now that you've done your rice thing, Chloe, Daddy and I are gonna go do ours. Okay? Yeah. So you're gonna help me, right? Mm -hmm. All, All right. right, let's move on down here. I'm gonna put a little bit of sesame oil in the pan. Probably about two tablespoons. Okay, I'm gonna put some onion in there, diced onion. 